Hello everybody, my name is Nemo, and welcome to another video of Magic the Gathering Jewels of Blazox 2013. Now, um, this is going to be uh, the first episode of a new series, and well, new, I, ca I basically just copied the ID from Daisha. So, there's, there's my originality for you, <laughs> I just copied an ID from someone else. <laughs> but uh, the ID of this series is the same as his Endurance series, where it is, um, I just play a deck until I lose with that deck and then I swap to a different deck and we're gonna do this with every deck so um, we'll see how many episodes we get and how long I can last with each deck and all that kinds of fun and I felt like this is the right time to start a series like this because uh, with the new DLC coming out and all that I didn't really feel like I was playing the old decks enough so this is a good excuse to play some more of the old decks as well as um, a good excuse to show you how I've built them differently since the deck build videos I did on them because some changed a little bit um, none have changed a lot however so uh, I'll be starting with the uh, Born of Flame deck oh and also something else this is the 200 video on my channel so uh, I figured that if I was gonna start a new series this would be the right time to start it you know in celebration of the, this being the 200 video and all that so um, yeah that is pretty crazy having 200 videos. But let's get into here and uh, not bore you by just talking and not doing anything in-game. In uh, so, the Born of Flame deck is pretty powerful. Uh, I don't consistently win with it, like consistent, like super consistently. Well, basically, I guess winning consistently would be winning more than you lose. And I certainly do that with every deck, so I don't know. But compared to some of the other decks, this certainly isn't the most powerful deck. But it does well, it's fun, and for a burn deck it, it does really... It is a very good burn deck, um, but as a burn deck it can't deal with every single situation. So we could be very unlucky and be, and um, go up against like Oromancer, who um, this deck sometimes can't deal with if you get unlucky. So Or like Pack Instinct, um, which is a bad matchup for this deck as well. So you never know, but uh, this deck should do well. But Magic Gathering is a luck-based game in this series certainly shall highlight the, the amount of luck that is involved in a game like this. So, uh, how much did I change this deck? Well, I took out Furnace of Wrath because uh, since the expansion came out I changed it, some of the decks a little bit, um, some of the earlier decks, and Furnace of Wrath was one of these uh, cards that didn't work as well after the expansion came out simply because the format changed a little bit. It became a little bit more tempo oriented and um, I certainly feel that this card doesn't work for you that well if you want uh, to go that around. Um, also, you know, playing against uh, Rakdos and, and having this card is, is not always nice. Of course, you can discard it when they, when they play something, but I mean, if this card is out, this card just isn't as good uh, against Rakdos because they have a lot of stuff that just deals you damage without you being able to stop them from doing it. It also doesn't work well against, of course, the Mirror Match, but also not against uh, Mindstorms and uh, a bunch of other decks that, you know, it, it, what it really did help against was the match against uh, Pack Instinct because it helped you if you didn't have the right hand to uh, burn them to the face you would otherwise lose, whereas if you have this card you sometimes would have been able to actually just one for one your removal spells with their creatures, which normally wouldn't be possible because the creatures are so big and your burn spells don't always deal enough damage. But anyway, I took it out and uh, instead I added a Fire Servant since. And I've actually liked the Fire Servant so much that I added the second one and also took out the second Magma Phoenix. And the reason Magma Phoenix was the card to go is because having two of those isn't always too useful. And the same could be said for Obsidian Fireheart, but I like Obsidian Fireheart more than Magma Phoenix. And Obsidian Fireheart is a 4-drop, not a 5-drop. And having two 5-drops that don't always work well when you have two of them is more detrimental then having two four drops that don't always work well when you have two of them. So that is the deck, that is um, the changes I made to the deck build since I made the deck build video. So we'll go ahead and get into a game now and I'll see you there. Welcome to the first match in win or swap. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna swap this hand though. <laughs> um, this is slightly better, not entirely exciting um, but I think I can keep this um, four lands hands aren't always great uh, but like I have something to deal with for creature 
something to deal damage to his face. So I can go either way with this. I don't have a creature, however, myself. But hey, you don't always get one in the starting hand with Born of Flame. That's um, asking for a little bit much. But if the combination of the fact that I don't have a creature and that I have four lands is a little bit more worrying um, as a combination of those two factors. However, I think I've been drawing pretty well now. And now I have like uh, 10 damage right here in my hand. So all I need to do is somehow make sure that Magma Phoenix or other creatures um, deal the remaining damage. And then I'll be good to go. Of course, he could be playing Celestial Light, and I wouldn't like that at all. He could also be playing the Mono White version of Aura Servants, and I wouldn't like that, that either, but at least I'd be able to target his creatures, since none would be uh, having Hexproof, you know? Um, yeah, wow. <laughs> Seriously? Oh! Take that, because <laughs> otherwise he gains one life here. And I guess I just um, Flame Slash it, and, and Searing Spear it. Yeah, he doesn't gain a life. Um, that's a prevented, at least. Um, wow. Alright, well, this guy may know my channel if he's playing the Mono White ver version of the deck. Or he just isn't drawing any islands. Or he um, came to the same conclusion as I did on making the deck the way it is. Or he's running Splash of Blue. Some people do that as well. Um, I haven't actually tried that myself, to be honest with you. But, uh... You could also run the deck with just very light on the blue side. Okay, that may be what he's doing. Or indeed, he didn't draw any any islands uh, until just now. Um, so I'm certainly not happy seeing his deck. Um, and also not happy having to have spent two cards dealing with his creature. Um, Flicker Wisp, a land. I, I imagine the island. So he can then play the uh, instant speed spell that gives this guy totem armor. Um, I know the tricks. I know the tricks. I know the tricks. So this is when it dies, not when it leaves the battlefield. Alright. Um, there we go. I can't even red sun in my own magma phoenix, can I? Uh, just to deal the free damage to his um, invisible stalker is what I mean to say by that. I'd have to use searing spear because this would exile my, my magma phoenix and that wouldn't work. Um, that is a non-bow. Yeah, hmm, that's interesting. Anyways, um, so yeah, bad matchup right uh, right from the get-go here. Um, something interesting about this is that some decks are just, I'm sometimes just going to lose outright. Other times I may end up having a lot of wins with maybe even a weak deck. Um, the variance in a series like this should be pretty big, so um, you should definitely not look at it and think, hey, that's that deck did really well in his... Um, in his win or swap series, so now it should do really well in general. That that totally isn't the case, because because um, of the variance here. Oh, hmm, man, he is getting all the annoying creatures, isn't he? Well, um, I'm definitely as long as he doesn't have any any totem armor on it. I can't imagine him getting anything different than totem armor, though. I mean, you can just basically get whatever he needs, uh, or just anything that makes it big enough. To survive the Magma Phoenix. Maybe he plays. Maybe he gets the thing that gives it plus X plus X, where X is the amount of cards in, in his hand, and he has two cards in his hand. Right? Nope. Indestructibility. Great. <clears throat> great. Just great. That is exactly what I wanted to see. <laughs> so I can't actually deal with that thing, so all I can do now is race him. And I've got five damage with Red Sun Zenith. Well, let's, let's deal him free here. Let's see about dealing him free damage. Uh, I need to get rid of this thing because he can just get life gain and all kinds of stuff with that. Um, so I can't keep this to deal the 5 damage to him. Um, need, to, need to get rid of that immediately. Gone. Alright. So, because he can just do tutor whatever he needs with that. I don't know. I need to be pretty lucky to win this game, I think. Um, Certainly not a good matchup, and this is the reason why Born of Flame is not as powerful as some of the other decks. Like, it is actually a very good deck, but just the fact that it's Burn. Um, burn decks in general don't always deal with any kind of situation. This is certainly a situation that this the Burn deck is going to have trouble with, so... Yeah, anyways, that is annoying as well. <sighs> Man, I just pretty much just need to deal in free year, then he'd be at 10 life... Oh, 
He can't deal with that. He cannot deal with this. He cannot. Whew. Okay, well, he needs life gain and a lot of it. <laughs> Pretty fast. Because this is, this is absolutely going to wreck him. So see, including the fire servant. Yeah, you still take free damage. That's cool. Except I guess the only difference is I take free damage here as well. But fire servant. Um, he can pacify it. He can narcolepsy it, but he can't get rid of it. And all I need is its passive effect. So, I mean, I got I got 12 damage right here. So there's nothing. He, he can gain life. That's it. And I might even draw another. Wow, that was a, such a good, such a good rip right there, the fire servant. <laughs> wow. Yep, 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 yep. So this is basically kind of the reason why I was why I was um, running Furnace of Wrath is because that does the same thing for this deck is that it helps you deal with situations that otherwise you m might not have been able to deal with and um, this thing as a creature is easier to get rid of where Furnace of Wrath isn't. Of course, Furnace of Wrath has the chance to backfire, but I felt like there were um, way more situations uh, where it wouldn't, uh, at least in the original game. Um, I think the, the format changed though. Oh wow. Stevens. GG. Ah, never mind. <laughs> There's no time to type it as they leave and uh, I win. So that is that is a rage quit. That I would consider that a rage quit. This is a discussion I've seen on forums and all that. Uh, what do you consider a rage quit? What isn't considered a rage quit? Um, well, personally, I mean, if someone place Panoptic Mirror and puts the time warp on it and it's going to take ages to finish that, I'll, I'll quit that game. I mean, and I don't have any trouble with anybody else quitting that game either. In fact, I don't have trouble with anybody quitting a game at all. Um, let's put that... Like, I don't have a trouble with quitting. Um, but I would c consider this a rage quit because just as I'm about to kill him, he, he quits. That just doesn't save anybody any time, which would be the normal reason for conceding is to save time and um, this doesn't save anybody time in fact it costs me time because I have to make another match now I mean that's just the way it is but uh, anyways my name's been Nemo and will still be Nemo in the next video and certainly also in the next episode of win or swap so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and I hope uh, you'll let me know what you think about this series ID even though it wasn't really my ID but still the ID of me that I was gonna do this um, I guess. <laughs> that was an ID, right? Uh, and if you haven't already, go check out Daisho's Endurance series. It's pretty cool. Uh, it was pretty fun to watch. Uh, so, anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.